Asher has just returned to the United States, fresh off her competition at the World Veteran Fencing Championships. She placed in the top six. Not bad for a first-timer. In her early 50s, it's yet another adventure crossed off her wish list. Just the opportunity to, you know, sort of live out your middle-aged fantasies of representing your country at an international competition was, you know, just a lot of fun. It was fun to see the other fencers, the different styles of fencing. This is as close as I'm going to get. I mean, the, you know, it's a world championship is still sort of, I think, a pale thing compared to the Olympics. There's a lot more pomp and sort of um, uh, ritual around the competition, but it's still, at these championships, when they award the medals, the person who's won, they announce in French and in English, you know, you, that this is the world champion, the champion du monde. If you are the gold medalist, your flag is raised, they play your national anthem. It's quite something. Valerie began fencing in 1979 at Yale University. She dated a fencer in college, and after a few months, she proved herself worthy to actually compete. This was only four years after Title IX allowed women to play sports. But it wasn't significant to her at the time. In retrospect, you know, now I see what, you know, young women have and what they're, how they're funded. And it's like, wow, you guys have so much. But, you know, we were just happy to be doing sports. After college, there was medical school. And she hung up her helmet until 2000. Upon hearing of the death of her former boyfriend, Valerie decided to fundraise for Yale's fencing program. And it hit her. I was sitting there at my kitchen table making cold calls to people that I hadn't talked to in, so this is in probably almost 20 years, and I just suddenly was overwhelmed with the desire to start fencing. It was like this complete sort of surge that, you know, I should do this. It would just be something I would do, you know, recreationally. I would, ta I would take some lessons, I would fence with people in the club. I never dreamed that I would be, you know, flying all over the country, let alone all over the world to go and compete. She's ranked third nationally among fencers 50 to 59. She didn't place at this year's world championship, but that's fine. Now there's something to work towards. Go back to world championships and to win the gold medal, that's absolutely. Um, to have the longevity in the sport that my friend, my friend Jim Adams has, and to do this for decades. And then I'd like to continue to compete in division one, which is the, sort of the top division and I'd like to at least crack the, um, the top 12 at, at uh, nationals. I've done that once, but I'd like to do that again. She calls fencing a gift, one that keeps the legacy of an old friend alive. I don't think that most people in their 40s, you know, find a sport, get, become nationally good, become internationally good, and find a community like this. It's, it's really something that you know, usually you're kind of on a track and you've, you've picked up these things along the way and maybe they continue to grow, but to sort of trip into all this in my 40s was really an extraordinary thing. When Jim the Adams fences, it's an art form. After more than 50 years of practice, he knows what he's doing. He earned a silver and bronze medal at this year's championships in the 70 plus age category. It's one of his favorite competitions each year. If you've gone often enough, also like a family reunion because you see people that you've seen over, uh, over again. And uh, I now have very good friends in so many countries, I can't name them all. In fencing, we're friends until we put the masks on and then we're competitors. And we take the masks off, we're back to being friends again. Given the fact that we're all a bunch of old men and women, we're all happy to be active and uh, able to do something we enjoy. Jim's a staple at the DC Fencers Club. He's a mentor, friend, and fierce competitor. Quick to prove age is not a number, it's a mindset. One of the things I console myself with when I get into a tough bout is uh, that my opponent is an old man. And uh, that gives me uh, a sense that uh, maybe I have a chance to beat him. But after 50 years, he's still not ready to retire. What's left? Keep going, try to win a world championship. Well, it's back to this trip for Valerie and Jim. After all, they're only a year away from next year's World Veteran Fencing Championships.